I'm Jim Watt. Welcome to another edition of Hooked on Fly Time. And I'm Kelly Watt. In this video, Renee Harrop, one of the most innovative and artistic fly tires, leads us through tying a series of patterns representative of the life cycle of the caddis fly. The caddis fly is one of the most important sources of food in a trout's diet, so you as an angler and fly tire will benefit immensely from Renee's vast knowledge. Renee and Bonnie, his wife and partner for 28 years, created the House of Harrop 26 years ago, designing flies for trout anglers throughout the world. Now two of their children, Shane and Leslie, are also part of the business, helping to keep up with demand. He has also licensed Mackenzie Flies to manufacture some of his patterns to keep up with the demand for his unique creations. Though studying and creating new fly patterns occupy a vast amount of Renee's time, he still finds space to get away to his drawing table to create beautiful and amazingly lifelike images of the stream. In this video, Renee will focus on the three stages of the caddis fly, plus introduce you to transitional patterns that work between the stages. As fishing pressure increases, along with catch and release, trout get harder to fool, so anglers need more and better patterns to present. Now here's Renee. The first fly is a CDC cased caddis larva. Each fly will be preceded by a panel that lists the materials you'll need for the fly. Well, the, the life cycle of a caddis, uh, compared to the, the life cycle of a mayfly, has, has, has one real basic difference, and that is that there are four stages as compared to three. Now we're going to begin this, this series with a, an example of what is known as a case caddis. In other words, it's uh, the larva in its underwater stage that uh, it builds a case, a protective case in which it spends its time when it lives, lives uh, underwater. Again, it's, the majority of its life is spent underwater. And um, we'll start tying the fly by tying a little bit of copper wire. We're going to use that barb of the hook as the, as the back reference to begin the fly. We're going to use turkey tail fiber for the, the case portion of this fly. And uh, we'll turn the end here so that the tips are even. We'll tie that in the same position that we tied the, the wire rib. Lock it in, good and firm. Now for this fly, we're going to need to build a cone-shaped underbody to give us the correct appearance of the of the case. We're going to want, want to make this fairly thin, so we use some of this fine dubbing that is quite close to the same color as the, uh, the turkey fiber. And we'll just begin working our way forward, dubbing all the time. The rule on this is going to be about 50%. I'm going to pull a little of this dubbing off. I got a little bit more than we need. Doesn't represent a problem. You can see we're tapering that from, from very slender to, uh, to fairly chunky right in the front. We're going to allow approximately 50% of the, of the hook to remain. Now, as we bring this fiber over, begin wrapping it forward. Get the wraps fairly tight. Compress up the shank of the hook. So we have a nice conical, conical shape here. Tie the butts off, secure them in place. Away the waste. Now we'll come back, pick up the good copper wire, and with open turns, we'll begin to spiral the wire forward. This is a reinforcement factor. The hurl actually could be a little bit fragile and come up 